the studies go uh, to examine um, is to examine hyperbole from many perspectives and from various angles. Furthermore, one of the objectives is to research and examine how hyperboles are utilized in communication and what purposes they serve both in terms of how readers perceive information in the novel and how characters use them in conversation. To learn more about the goal of hyperbole generation, the task is to compare diverse forms and common elements of exaggeration in various circumstances. The agency of the topic stems from the scarcity of studies of exaggeration in Bell Letters works of art, which has allowed us to study hyperbole's influence both in the literary environment and in simulating real life situations. Uh, the study has been carried out by identifying exaggeration in To Kill a Mocking's Bird text and defining its semantic and lexical aspects. Different forms and ways of realizing hyperbole have been discovered and characterized thanks to the classification of hyperbole. Furthermore, the research has described the functions of hyperbole in communication as well as how they are actualized in the novel's text. Certain hyperbole functions have been highlighted, including those that are commonly employed in communication and those that are utilized less frequently. The research article also includes statistics on how frequently certain hyperboles are utilized. This enables us to comprehend the role of hyperbole in communication and the regularity with which it is employed. In order to conduct the study, it is necessary to select a way of analyzing the chosen stylistic devices. In section two, various types of hyperbole analysis have been examined and some methods of investigation have been chosen. First of all, the methods of data analysis have been selected, such as the analysis methods based on Melong. Stages in Melong's analysis methods are called reduction data, representing data, and verification. The first stage has been extended as we have been using fetch methods as the observation method in order to find the needed data and descriptive, comparative, and functional methods as well in order to fully analyze the data. The classification of hyperboles has been taken from Claudia Claridge's hyperbole in English in order to analyze previously found research objects. Uh, as a result, they also employed both basic and comp composite hyperbole. We have investigated their significance and roles. Because there is only one domain of the word, basic hyperboles are simple to generate. Nonetheless, they have the desired impact. When it comes to composite hyperbole, they are more difficult to create because they involve a domain change. They do, however, have a higher and stronger impact on the reader's perception and emotions, resulting in more admiration. Let us take a look at how frequently basic and composite hyperboles are used. Please see figure number one. The frequency of use of basic and composite hyperboles in the novel has been investigated using a sample of the initial portions of the novel. Basic hyperboles are used more frequently than composite hyperboles, as we have seen. Single word, phrasal, clausal, and numerical hyperboles have all been studied. Single word hyperboles consist of only one word which generate the intended exaggerated effect. Different word combinations are used to create phrasal hyperboles which generate the desired effect. Clausal hyperboles have word components that are dispersed across the sentence and or close which is why they are named clausal hyperboles. When it comes to numerical hyperboles, they are created using various sorts of numerals and contribute to larger scale hyperboles. Different time expressions have been investigated and compared in order to define the ratio of all time defining words to hyperboles, which are created by using them. Those time expressions were words like years, hours, seconds, months, and weeks. 
all given words have been counted and the ratio of all words to hyperbolic words has been defined. According to the time expressions provided above, the percentages of hyperboles in such words are as false. Yes is 19%, hours is 11%, seconds 0%, months is 0%, and weeks is 8, 28%. Their sum is equal to approximately 17% of all of these keywords. All in all, we have noted that these time expressions are often used as hyperboles in their communicative aspects. The detailed information is given in figure two. Please see figure number two. Cool. Uh, in order to do an analysis of wet identifiers of the semantic field quantity, we have done the same calculation as was done with the previous semantic field and then analyze the ratio. For detailed analysis of numeral hyperboles, we have chosen such quantifiers as thousand or thousands, hundred or hundreds. If we consider the statistics, we noted that there is only one word thousand in the novel and it is a numeral hyperbole. Looking into statistic about numeral hundred, we have observed that 21 words of hundred are presented and eight of them are numeral hyperboles. On this basis, we have claimed that 40, approximately 40% 40 of the provided numerals are hyperboles. Quite a large percentage of numerals have become numeral hyperboles in order to achieve different aims in communication. In figure three, the chart of the comparison is presented. As with the previous uh, selected semantic fields, some typical words have been chosen in order to compare how many of them are hyperboles. The following words have been selected, such as enormous, endless, gigantic, huge, vast, nearly, and almost. They have all been found in the text in order to count how many of them are used in a hyperbolic way. The results are as follows. Hyperboles have been defined as enormous, is 33%, endless 100%, gigantic 100%, huge 0%, vast 0%, nearly 13%, and almost 19%. When we summed up all of this data, we have found that the percentage of the hyperboles, uh, which are formed with the most typical words describing degree of intensity, is approximately 19%. Please see figure number four. Uh, in this research article, we have been investigating such figure of speech as hyperbole. It has been seen that it is one of the most common stylistic devices and because of its versatile functions, it has often been discussed by linguists. The study has been done in order to investigate and take a deeper look at different aspects of hyperbole's usage. Hyperbole has a considerable impact on our lives and can lead to different results in conversations. The significance of uh, the research has been stated as an uh, importance to observe some communicative situations in which hyperboles are often used. The current study has been done in order to understand the typical functions and features of hyperboles in the novel and to draw conclusions about their significance in our lives. The research article shows different features of hyperbole and ways of its realization. The study includes basic knowledge about hyperboles and their aims in the text of the novel To Kill a Mockingbird by Hyperbole. In the future, it will be possible to research hyperboles in other other novels by Hapali, or to find out another classification of hyperbole and to compare the current result to the new ones. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, dear participants, any questions? Well, I would like to un, uh, ask, um, how did you define the keywords? Did you use any software uh, tools? Well, to process the corpus of text. So, because hyperbole, uh, uh, like metaphor, is the least um, formalized well, aspect of, of the text. So, what tools did you use uh, uh, to yes, formalize uh, and to extract the keywords? Mm, uh, thank you for your question. At the first uh, stage, uh, we tried uh, to uh, uh, to read uh, and to do it manually. Then we use such um, applications as tropes and concordance, and also uh, this. Um, 
um, uh, research method uh, by the long reduction data, uh, representing data and verification has its application uh, in order to analyze uh, these hyperboles automatically. It was a really complicated and sophisticated process in order to try to find out the same quantity of, of uh, hyperboles uh, manually and automatically. Okay, thank you. Okay, so and now it's my turn now to present my research. So uh, um, uh, let, let me start sharing the screen and uh, present the research, my research, the research attempt. Can you see it? I hope you can. Stylistic and conceptual function of episode in poetic discourse, an experience of tropes, text semantic analysis program application. So um, the Technic National University is my affiliation. Our cognitive poetics and cognitive stylistic actively apply a formal methods of language material description and processing. So algorithms and methods of corpus research, natural language semantic analysis with the help of specific computer programs. However, the very nature of a distinct um, language is contradictory. On the one hand, the content of the text cannot be deduced from the sum of the meanings of words it comprised, because of the semantics of the text is influenced well, by different uh, and versatile factors. On the other hand, the frequency of textual linguistic elements, which is one of the means of formalizing this complex and ambiguous lingual cognitive and lingual semiotic object, allows researchers to achieve a systematic description of both the meaning of a particular text and the specifics of individual statistic systems. The aim of this research is um, to study to identify the specifics of John Keats and Samuel Taylor Coleridge individual style by analyzing the role and semantic cognitive aspects of episodes as elements of their poetic discourse. In the theory of autistic speech, episode has not been given due attention, which can be explained by the fact that in the works of many modern Authors, the notion of episode is so broad that under the close examination it falls into a different uh, subjective concept. Well, however, the more or less unanimously accepted definition and understanding of episode uh, provided by stylistics is as a lexical syntactic trope which is characterized by mandatory presence of subjective, emotional, expressive, or other connotations, which express author's attitude to the subject. In our research, uh, we focused on uh, the episodes um, modeled by the pattern adjective plus noun as the most frequent and the most uh, common one. Determining the meaning and function of Third, in verbalization of the core concepts, we conduct a two-stage analysis of selected poetic texts. In the first stage, we built a conceptual profile of author's poetry. To this, we use the program of text semantic analysis, tropes, and now the conceptual space of its uh, poetic discourse includes 17 most frequent conceptual fields now presented in the diagram figure one and the conceptual space of Coleridge poetics has 21 most frequently integrated conceptual fields presented uh, at uh, the diagram number two. With the help of the above mentioned program, we establish the specifics of the lexical content of each of the selected conceptual fields and its variability. For this purpose, it was performed uh, the frequency analysis of verbalizers of micro concepts included in each of the selected fields. 
To a great or lesser degree, the selected nouns, the first stage uh, um, of analysis was performed on the basis of nouns frequency analysis. And to a greater or lesser extent, the selected nouns, nominations of artistic microconcepts undergo the process of artistic transformations, which he called epithetization. Therefore, the second stage of the study is to analyze the specifics of the processes of artistic transference, the relationship between the frequency of the use of the noun and the frequency of context of its epithetization was established. It was found that different nouns have different degree of epithetization. However, the higher frequency nouns, and we analyze context with a frequency of um, more than 50, lexical units may not undergo the processes of artistic meaning emergence. This stage of analysis was performed applying the corpus analysis program on conks. The result of this stage is presented in the tables on the slide. As we can see, so the most frequent noun, uh, which is attributed by um, emotional, subjective, or expressive attributes or adjectives is the noun I. Uh, well, and it is a common feature of uh, the idiosyncrasy of both forces. Then the next step was the analysis of figurative models of parasitization in the Patek discourse of John Keats and Samuel Taylor. As a result of the research of semantics of episodes actualized for verbalization of the conceptual spheres, human and nature, as the most frequent and dominating in the discourses of both poets, on the basis of semantic and conceptual analysis, it was established that in John Keats and Coleridge poetry, the episodes that describe the human foreground physical, emotional, behavioral, social aspects of human existence. A human being is ascribed the characteristics of an animal, the elements of physical world, such parameters as light, color, temperature. Human feelings and states are represented through the physical world and such parameters of the physical world as brightness, color, uh, essence of substances, well, uh, the slide presents uh, the, um, um, the figurative models of episodes based on the most frequent noun I in those uh, words. Based on the frequency analysis, the ratio of semantic types of episodes was established. Metaphorical and compositional metaphors and the ratio of fixed conventional episodes and regional, also individual ones. As a result, it was found that Keats and Coleridge poetic discourse is characterized by a high frequency of fixed episodes, which expand their semantic structure and compositional model under the influence of poetic context. Nouns that receive artistic meaning belongs to a variety of conceptual domain, nature, man, abstract concepts, artifacts, the art, light and color, uh, features of physical world, physical phenomena, emotions, states, etc. And the frequency ratio is presented on the, this and the following slide. The next uh, stage of the analysis was establish the frequency of adjectives in the poetry of John Keats and Coleridge and to determine the main conceptual domains based on their frequency. The total number of adjectives in Keats poetry is more than 14,000. The total number of adjectives in Coleridge poetic discourse is more than 15,000 lexical uh, units. The relationship between the frequency of use and the frequency of epithetization of the adjective in context was established. The frequency and degree of epithetization was determined by the results of concordance program application. The most frequent adjectives with the highest degree of epithetization is the adjective sweet. Again, um, and this tendency is characteristic for poetic discourse of those forces. 
Well, the precise frequency analysis is presented on, on this slide. And the next stage was the comparative analysis of the systems and tendencies of capacitization and the tendencies of representing uh, the, the dominating conceptual space uh, in both art sources, well, by different types of tropaic elements. So the uh, element, the um, aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic uh, resources of the attic text. Application again of quantitative, stylistic, and contextual analysis, it was established that the episode is the third in significant stroke of the poetic system of those forces, preceded by metaphor and simile. It was also defined the ratio of figurative means of verbalization of dominant conceptual domains in the poetry of the analyzed author. For this purpose, applying the methodology of general sampling, the metaphor similes and episodes were selected from 20 most well-known verses of Keats and Coleridge, predominantly the lyrical poetry, and by quantitative calculation, the absolute and relative frequency in the poetic works uh, uh, was defined. Uh, that allows us to assume the possible correlations of these strokes in the poetry of both forces. It was defined that the artistic comparison, so simile, is the most frequent means of artistic conceptualization. Much, um, a practically, even distribution of similes in the text of the horses manifest the productivity of imagery world perception and reflection of object of artistic depictions on the ground of versatile associations and mental operations of um, assimilations and, and comparison. In the same way, the absolute and relative frequency of metaphors were defined, and the frequency ratio of basic tropes in the poetry of Keats and uh, Coleridge is presented on this slide. The high frequency of phrases, adjective plus noun, in the structure of metaphorical context testifies to the productivity of metaphorical episode in the poetic discourse of Coleridge and Keats. Of the analyzed 388 metaphorical context, almost all contain a metaphorical episode in their structure. Uh, so we mean the sustained, um, well, or prolonged metaphor. So um, both abstract and country concepts can be metaphorically defined, which also testifies to the high productivity of, um, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the productivity of um, uh, the basic metaphorical model, the human being and nature, well, that which testifies to um, uh, the anthropocentric nature of ethic. A poetic cognition in uh, in romanticism, well, and especially in the poetry of the selected authors. And the result of these processes is the spiritualization of the subject of imagery representation. So mostly the elements of nature, cognition, imagination, fantasy, and emotion. Both sports imagery systems are characterized by the presence of episodes and other tropes based on the phenomenon of synesthesia as the unity of visual, acoustic, sensory, emotional, and rational perception of the environment. By the usage of fixed associated metaphoric episodes, mainly on the basis of adjectives, sweet, soft, deep, and green, which are the con constants of the folk poetic picture of the world, uh, they become the constant representatives of the uh, phenomenon of environment, so the poetic um, conceptualization of uh, universe, environment, human existence, activities, and human cognitions. So, and what is characteristic, for example, for its discourse, so the conceptualization of language as, a, the, as an object of poetic, uh, uh, poetic analysis and reflection. Well, in the individual poetic uh, context, all uh, these tropes uh, are invigorated, well, uh, invigilated and inspired a, a new meaning, uh, well, and a new uh, sense. 
conceptual level of the work of art is a structured system that contains elements of varying degrees of complexity and abstractness. The main way of explicit verbalization of conceptual information is considered the keyword, the compatibility and semantic thematic vocabulary. To optimize the process of QA selection and extraction, the method of concordance compilation of those individual words and the whole array of authors' text is highly productive. Created concordances for the relevant corpus of text allow selecting and grouping conceptually loaded vocabulary according to the thematic layer of the context, identifying the necess um, the necessary fragments of text for further analysis of distribution, compatibility, and semantic content, lexical verbalizers of concept within micro and macro context. Okay, thank you for your attention. Well, I uh, would appreciate the questions. Yeah, so I would like to ask you, so maybe it's not just a question, it's also for my personal record, which tool have you used to distract simile, epithets, and metaphor? And also, uh, what difficulties have you encountered while doing that? Yeah, because I guess, I guess there are well, some difficulties, maybe even a lot of difficulties. Yeah. yeah, so this question correlates with the question I asked to Marta. Yeah, no? yeah, 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 the exactly. The first tool, the main tool uh, was, um, so the main aim of the research was um, uh, to check the efficiency of specific computer programs um, on the poetic discourse, well, which is, um, um, is difficult well to formalize well and the extraction of these um, keywords and the building of semantic categories was performed by the application of trope tropes program there is a specific program well which can uh, suggest um, well the main domains the conceptual domains or uh, referential fields as it is stamped in the program uh, well however uh, all uh, these results should be checked processed and verified manually well, and concerning episodes so we focused on um on, on very narrow model adjective plus noun and then concerning uh, similes so, uh, again uh, we performed the structural principle the um uh, the um, the presence of the linking element as like well or um basically as and like so th this was the, the one criteria, uh, one basic criteria for um, for extracting well these um, the figurative or aesthetic uh, elements well of language. Well, however, most information is implied well left implicit in, in the text. So the, the bulk of aesthetic, the bulk of imagery well it is expressed implicitly. Well, so that's why, of course, such researchers and such analysis uh, uh, should be supplemented by, by manual uh, processing and checking of the material. Okay, thank you. So I'm usually curious how other people do it, because when I do my own research, particularly for last conference, I also had a lot of problems by uh, extracting certain items. And this year I decided uh, to do something else that's something that which is precise and you don't do it manually, you don't have to uh, to check it manually yeah. So I thought maybe there are some no, things it, but it depends on linguistics, the it's not easy. It depends on the yeah, text. Thank you. There are texts which yeah, can be course. formalized yeah. and uh, so uh, the poetic discourse is very difficult to, to, to be subjected to the formalizing procedures. Yeah, but when we come to poetic discourse, then yeah, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could I ask mm -hmm. one more question? And uh, which of uh, stylistic devices mentioned by you, epithet, metaphor, or simile, were the most complicated to analyze automatically? Metaphor, maybe. Well, so yeah. Of course, uh, it's, it's practically important to predict the structure. Well uh in advance so metaphorical structure in advance simile and episodes well are defined well by specific uh, syntactic structure well however there are implied similes well 
uh, as implied um, episodes well as well, well but we focused on uh, adjective plus noun so um and as the um, perspective of further research maybe uh, we will uh, focus on other uh, structural patterns of episodes well compound for example episodes the string of episodes well and maybe the, the, uh, we elaborate so the algorithm of such analysis Thank you for your answer, because I heard that you also used uh, tropes, yes, uh, <laughs> during the process of analyzing these. Well, but it also requires device. manual checking. Well, uh, not mm -hmm. all these categories are exact, and sometimes they are very uh, narrow. So, for example, I, I am focused on human and nature. And so, for example, um, the, uh, the outcomes of the program was separate uh, referential field of nature, for example, plants. And, and water, but I think so the plants and water are the uh, the components, well, of the, uh, of the nature domain. No, so that's why uh, these categories should be processed manually. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, so I think we, okay, we can move move further and, uh, our next uh, team of presenters are Salamia Ohinok, uh, Mariana Hvost, Yaroslav Kis, Yuri Fedun, and Helena Kope. Well, um, so the time of their presentation is um, the time of their presentation is 7, uh, 1715, 1730. Uh, okay, well, maybe they will join us uh, in, in half an hour, or in 25 minutes. Well, then we should decide what we are going to do. Maybe we can. Uh, we can great. watch the presentation from YouTube. Probably that's why we all uh, pre-recorded all videos uh, in all the such emergencies. Well, but, yeah, but the people might might come in half an hour. Yeah. Yes, but I'm afraid they that they are waiting for their ten, and they may join in uh, twenty-five minutes or in a half. Uh, yes, the same. Hour. It's happened with the presentation before us. So we were supposed to present. Well, but I don't time, know but... why we are so ahead of time. So we uh, we follow the the, the schedule um, and the, 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 the time. So uh... in this case, we can proceed and wait for them. Well, later. but we, uh, Daria Davidenko, uh, I think, uh, has already presented. Uh, we have Vitali Slobodzian. Uh, uh, will you please? Okay, then we invite you to, to present the results of your research. Let me find uh, the... Maybe you, um, you announce uh, your topic mm -hmm. yourself. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yes. Uh, good Go afternoon. Uh, welcome, everyone, to my presentation. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vitaly Slobodzian. I'm a PhD student of computer science at Khmelnytsky National University, Ukraine. And the subject of my presentation today is uh, text data vectorization model of Ukrainian language internet communication content. Uh, nowadays, internet technology have a really important place in non-verbal communication. Uh, it has more than 4 billion users due to a lot of reasons. Uh, social media audience are significantly increasing. Availability of technology, even in poorly developed regions, uh, general digitalization of society, and of course, uh, for self-isolation measure because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemics, uh, it's just a small list of reasons increasing social media audience. Uh, however, the internet content is not only a means of communication, 
um, but also a critical factor of influence on people uh, because uh, it can cause various collective reaction, create fear, panic, uh, especially in context of uh, social emergency as pandemic, bar, uh, or any political or socially important circumstances. Uh, the proposed model could be used for solving the following problems. Uh, determine the emotional negative effects, warn user about potentially harmful content, uh, prevent the diets of intentions, and detect bullying for social network. Uh, and so on. Uh, there are a few issues with vectorization, especially with Ukrainian language text on the internet. Uh, the biggest issue is uh, using different language and mixing it up, uh, so call it surgic. Uh, Ukrainian borders seven countries, and due to this, it's common to use uh, borrowed words, especially in uh, informal internet communication. Uh, and one more common issue is defective words, words that were uh, initially challenged to emphasize the emotional sense. For example, to sound uh, more offensive, funny, sarcastic, uh, and so on. Uh, also, for some approaches, it's important to not part of speech or any other grammatical features. Uh, and it could be a problem because there is no dictionary that really can fully cover Ukrainian language for 100%, and there is no way United sentence structure and word could be used in casual order, which make uh, take analysis of Ukrainian language harder. And the last issue, but not the least, uh, it's common for all languages probably, uh, it's grammatical mistake. There is probably nothing to explain its nature of people can do mistakes uh, or even misprints. Uh, most of these problems are hard to, uh, hard or even impossible to avoid. But definitely texts with such issues shouldn't be skipped or ignored uh, because such texts constitute the lion's share of all everyday, everyday Ukrainian language internet content. So it was our goal to find the vectorization method uh, that let us minimize the influence of this issue and let us catch better results. Uh, but we will talk a little bit more about this method later. First, let me show approach in more detail. On this slide, you can see the whole shame of approach for creating model. Uh, it can consist of. Oh, I'm steps. sorry, we have one minute left uh, um, of Zoom time. Maybe mm, we will okay. rejoin. Okay. Okay.